Hey guys, hey, 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 welcome, welcome, welcome. We are back. It is Winning Wednesday. Are you excited? I'm excited. I hope we're both excited. So it's Winning Wednesday and today is Life Topic Wednesday. So we're going to be talking about a life topic today because it is the first Wednesday of the month, the first Wednesday in May. Um, so I want to thank you for joining me here on Winning and Living Golden, my channel Winning and Living Golden. And this is our next episode of Winning with Lisa, where we win, we win, we win. All right, guys, are y'all ready to win today? Are you ready to win in life? We're talking about momentum today. So this week, this um, idea, this concept came to me and I just really wanted to help us. I wanted to help me. I wanted to help you. I wanted to help us with being and getting unstuck in our lives and creating momentum in our life, in our business. It's so important because being stuck will get us nowhere. So momentum is what we're talking about today. And I want to welcome you. Welcome to those who are, are new to the channel. You are welcome. Um, and also please, please subscribe, click like, click share, um, share your comments on the on the post, let us know what you think. If you have any questions, I'll be glad. I'm, I'm very responsive, so I will be glad to respond to your comments. I'm so excited again about this winning and living golden challenge, uh, channel. And we are going to win and live golden in our, in our life. So today we're talking about momentum, creating momentum for your life. So what is momentum. And I did some posts earlier this week. I, I did Mindset Monday where I basically um, gave a, about three different points to momentum and creating momentum in your life. And the first point, which we'll go over in, in this post as well, is creating commitment or making that commitment. And then on Tuesday, I defined the term momentum and um, used um, the, the, the sci scientific, I guess, law, which is mass times velocity, but also talked about what momentum and how it shows up in our life. And so today I want to just go and do a deep dive. I want to do a deep dive and do a teaching on momentum and really help us to understand what it is. I'm going to give you eight whys, why we need it, what, what the benefits are to having momentum in our life. And then also uh, 12 hows. I wanna tell you 12 hows on how it is that we can actually go about creating the momentum. And then we'll give, I'll give you some examples. I'll give you some examples in life as well as um, business and how this might look, you know, just examples that you may or may not use, but it can give you, you know, just an idea of how creating momentum can look in your life or business. So y'all ready to jump in? Y'all ready to jump in? Momentum is amazing, guys. We need it. When I tell you, if you are feeling stuck, you got to learn how to create momentum in your life. So momentum in terms of, of productivity in our life or business, it's an advantage. It gives us an advantage because it's, at the, it's an advantage that's gained when we take action. And it can be a feeling that, you know, that you're moving towards a destination. And, and that's what's so important to know that we have somewhere to go, that we're going somewhere. Um, Newton's first law. So we're going scientific on you again today. Newton's first law of, of inertia states, and I'm going to read it, an object at rest remains at rest or if in motion remains in motion at a constant velocity unless acted on by a net external force. So if, if, if you're at rest, if you're not moving, you will remain at rest and not moving. If you're in motion, you will remain in motion unless something happens outside of you to stop you from either resting or being in motion. And this is a principle in life. 
right? I mean, it just makes sense, right? <laughs> Newton made it into a law, but it just makes common sense. If you're not moving, you'll continue to, to not move. If you're moving, you'll continue to move unless something forces you to change. So living a life that we desire is not always easy to achieve. It ain't easy. We have habits. We have um, repeated cycles uh, in our life that we have to overcome. Our habits are a form of momentum. Let me say that again. Our habits are a form of momentum. What we created in our life and how we operate in our life is a form of momentum. So our habits will actually create like an ebb and flow, a groove to our life. But when we create momentum, when we create a different momentum, we can move past those habits and those unhealthy cycles and move toward the life that we desire and that we want. So I want to give us, I want to start off giving us eight reasons why. We got to get the why, right? We got to get the reason why we need um, momentum in our life because we have to have that incentive to do things, right? So let's, let's start with number one, creating momentum makes you better. Creating momentum makes you better. How does it do that? It helps you improve yourself because you're not remaining stagnant. You're not remaining still. You're not remaining stuck when momentum is at play in your life. You're moving when momentum is in the picture, right? So we're doing things, we're going places, we're trying things, we're eliminating things to become better. And so we become better and better at what we do. And then our skill improves too. So creating momentum makes us better. That's the first why we need momentum in our life. The first benefit of momentum. Number two, your life will take off. Like on a, on a runway with the airplane, your life will take off because of momentum. That's a reason why we want momentum in our life. When we make up our mind to do something and start, things just take off in our life. It's, it's extraordinary how it happens. So, you know, and, and, I, and I realize this, you know, even with myself and my businesses, when I take an action, when I make a decision and I commit and I decide to take an action and I start working that thing, it's just the, like the universe just opens up. <laughs> to your action. Your action actually creates like a domino effect. It's amazing. So I encourage you to create momentum in your life and see your life take off. Number three reason why, this is good stuff. Reason, reason why we want to create momentum in our life. Number three, life is short. I don't have to tell you that. We know that life is short. Life is short. Shouldn't be, shouldn't we be living the best life possible? The best life that we can. Don't you want to be living the best life that you can? I do. <laughs> how we spend our days is how we spend our life. So our life is a culmination of all the days that, you know, were, were before that. Our, our life is a culmination of our days. So how we spend our days is how we spend our life. So how are you spending your life? Are you spending your life in a way that you will achieve your dreams and your goals and reach happiness and wholeness and all the good stuff in life? Create that momentum because life is short. Another reason why, number four, ideas come more easily once you start. When I tell you, the creative juices just start flowing. When you take action towards something, when you make a commitment and set a goal towards something and, and you start acting on it and creating that momentum, stuff just starts coming to you. Just creative ideas start, start coming to you. Thank you, Lord. Um, so that is another reason why you want to begin, that, that why you want to start and why you want to create that momentum in your life. Number five, reason why we want to create this momentum, this thing called momentum. Momentum helps you to focus on your goals. So once you get started, once you start, once you get unstuck and you start, now you're looking toward the future. Now you're looking, okay, I got to get here. I got to get there. This is what I want to do. This is where I want to be. This is what I want to be. This is who I want to be. 
And so that momentum, when you've started, it starts building that momentum. It helps you to focus on your goals. That's good stuff. Number six, reason why we want momentum is it helps us to reduce or eliminate, preferably eliminate procrastination. Momentum is the opposer to procrastination. Procrastination is that, that stuck place where we're, we're not moving. We're delaying things. We're, we're not moving. And so momentum, that when that ball gets rolling, it helps us to reduce that procrastination or, like I said, preferably eliminate procrastination in our life. Number seven, we're almost there. Number seven, reason why, reason why the benefit to creating momentum in our life. Number seven, it helps us to accomplish more things and greater things, more things and greater things. We can't, we can't accomplish nothing if we're stuck, if we're not moving. So when we create that momentum, it helps us to begin to accomplish things. And if you're accomplishing things, you can accomplish greater things because now you're being successful, right? All right. So number eight, why we want to create momentum. Why? What's a benefit? With momentum, it's easy to believe in yourself. It's easy to believe that you can accomplish anything because momentum produces that feeling of, oh my gosh, this is happening. It's really happening. I'm doing it. And so it creates that belief in yourself and that you can accomplish anything. It's almost like it has a, a built-in optimism mechanism within the, the, the whole momentum ball. That's, that's how I see it. It's like it's just built in. So those are eight wonderful reasons why we want to create momentum in our life, guys. Why it's beneficial to have this thing called momentum operating in our life. I want to give you some hows. How do we do it? So we, we know the reasons why we have the incentives as to why it's good for us, why we want it, why we should want it. But how do we do it? How do we do it? Let me scroll down on my little notepad here. So how do we create momentum? And I'm gonna I'm gonna start off and say it is not easy. And 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 a lot of us know that. We know that when we set a goal, it's something that we want to do. A lot of times our goals are there to make us better, to enrich our lives. But gosh, I tell you, there's some of the hardest things to do. It takes so much effort. But the effort is worth it. It's worth it every time. And we got to start telling ourselves that and start changing the narrative for ourselves that that effort is going to be worth it. So 12 hows, how do we create momentum in our life? First, and I said this already, make the commitment. And not only make the commitment, but make the commitment to you. You're making a commitment to yourself. Get and stay motivated. Oh, I know it's easy. I mean, I know it's harder said than done. Oh, I know it's 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 easier. Sorry, it's easier said than done. Done. I said it right the first time. It's easier said than done. It's so easy to say. Get and stay motivated. Con commit to uh, improving yourself. This is where we start. This is how we start to create momentum with commitment. Number two, how, how do we do it? How do we create this momentum? We've got to get inspired, get inspired. How do you want your future to look? How do you want your life to look? Create your picture in your mind of what success looks like, and then make it a reality, make it a reality. Oh my gosh. What makes you happy? What makes you feel whole and complete? What's important to you? And so when we're getting inspired, we're not getting inspired about someone else's vision for their life. It's what we want, what we desire, what God has for us. So inspire yourself. Look for inspiring quotes. You can look for daily affirmations. Do daily affirmations to help inspire you to create that momentum. 
we can, you know, look for heroes. Who is your hero? Who do you look up to? People that you admire, um, that you've seen or that you admire. Keep reminding yourself that if your heroes can do it, if the people that you admire and have seen be successful can do it, you can do it too. I can do it too. I am doing it. Say, I am doing it. <laughs> I'm doing it. Put on that music. Put on that dance music or that, 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 that house music or whatever it is, the gospel music, whatever it is that inspires you. Um, do that. Read your scriptures. Talk to God. Pray. Get inspired. Whatever your inspiration is, use it to your advantage um, so that you can create that momentum in your life. So three, three on how we create momentum in our life. Know and learn what we love, right? Know and love, know and learn what we love and do what we love. So in order to know what we love, we got to learn it. We got to, we got to figure it out. And, you know, one thing that I learned here recently, or it just kind of came to me recently was that, uh, our, um, our youth, a lot of times holds for us different passions, different abilities, and we discover different loves when we're young, things that we like to do when we're young, but life then gets in the way. So one of the things that I love to do in my pastime when I wasn't doing homework or playing outside or whatever, I love to paint. I love to do watercolors. I love to draw. Um, I used to draw houses and um, actual like dress designs and stuff like that. I thought I was going to be an architect <laughs> at one point. I love to draw elevations of houses, um, but I love colors too. I'm, I'm a, I, I, anyone who knows me know I love colors. And so I love to color and, and use color pencils and stuff like that. And so I recently picked that back up and um, got a coloring book for entrepreneurs. And I'll share a post on that. Um, because I do want to give credit to the, the entrepreneur who created this, this coloring book and these pencils. But I, I say that to say that, you know, we have to know, we have to learn what it is that we love and what we want in our life and what, and do that, do what we love. And a lot of times life gets in the way life, you know, comes in and covers up and, and stifles and smothers those, those youth passions and those things that we discovered in our youth that we love to do. And so, you know, we have to uncover what those are. Think back, look back. When was I my most free? When was I my most happiest when I was young? And I would say even between the ages of, gosh, elementary school to like middle school. You know, before, before you know, you started getting into liking boys and liking girls and you know, there was that time of innocence and freedom and, and just, you were just doing what you love to do. Think back, what are some of the things that you love to do? And it might not necessarily be something specific, but it could be a place that you love to be at or a, just a, a mindset that you remember just when I got into this mindset, I was so peaceful and it just helped me to really, you know, get things accomplished. Um, so think back to those things, read articles, watch videos. You can read books that, you know, different things that will uncover what you love and your passions. And, and, it will, and that will also help you better your mind and help you be more creative um, and express, you know, what those desires are. Learn what makes you happy. And you can ask yourself the question. So ask yourself the question, what makes me happy in, and then fill in the blank. What makes me happy in my career? What makes me happy in my relationship? What, what makes me happy in my, in, with my lifestyle, in my business, in my leisure time, in, in all those areas of life? Fill in that blank. Learn what it is, know it, and then do it. You know, even in your hobbies, what, makes, what hobbies make me happy? Um, find the time to do what you love. Find the time to do what you love instead of only doing what you have to do. We spend so, 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 so much of our life, our day, like I said, 
our life is a culmination of all the days, how we spend our days and we spend so much of our days and in essence, our life doing what, only what we have to do. But find the time to do what you love to do and it will help create momentum for your life. So number four, oh, this is good. This is good. I hope it's helping somebody. I hope this is helping somebody. Number four, ways of how we can create momentum in our life. Um, not ways, the, the, yeah, the ways, the how, that's the, that's the thing, the how we can create momentum in our life for everyone's talking about this bag thing. So we got to create a bag. So what's a bag? A B H A G, a big, hairy, audacious goal. Just dream big. <laughs> that's what it means. Dream big. Make sure your goals are powerful. Dream big. Dreaming big gives us something to shoot for. It gives us something bigger than us to shoot for. And that helps to create momentum in our life. Momentum is budding when we dream. When we dream, we have visions, you know, we're thinking about these things that we love, you know, it that momentum is actually budding in that. And then when we set the goals and begin to take a step, we make that commitment and step, take that step. Now you're creating momentum. And so that's what we want to do. We want to create and sustain momentum by creating that goal, by dreaming big. Number five, number five, this one is going to be good. It's going to step on some toes though. <laughs> number five, make some eliminations and make some inclusions in your life. Make some eliminations and to make some inclusions in your life. Eliminations, we're eliminating those things, those people that drain our energy. And then we're recharging ourselves. So we're, we're ridding ourselves of those things and people that drain our energy and don't pour into us and don't pour back into us. And then we're doing those things to recharge ourselves. That's the elimination part. The inclusion part is we're including in our circle the handful of people. For me, it's a handful of people <laughs> um, who can help you move forward in your life, who help to move your life forward. These people can have insight. Gosh, they can have that wisdom that can help you to create and maintain momentum in your life. So it can include a mentor. It could be a family member. It could be a friend. It could be a colleague. It could be a, a, a business partner or, you know, a, a spouse. But whoever those people are in your circle, make sure that you're including the people that will help to push your life forward and can help create that momentum in your life. A mentor, a mentor, guys, is someone who is doing better than you are. So a mentor should be already successful and, and more successful than you, possibly in the same uh, industry or the same, uh, they have the same um, life makeup, so to speak, that you do, but they don't, that doesn't necessarily have to be true as well. As long as they're a successful person that you can model, that you can uh, re receive information from and, and um, just really model how they have um, made steps and maneuvered in their life and also learn from some mistakes they've made, that's going to be a great mentor for you. Even the most successful people have mentors. And so remember that it's not, it's not something that is derogatory or, you know, a bad thing. Successful people have mentors. All right. So number six, number six, number six to how to create momentum in our life. Number six is access your strength. Access your strength. How do we access our strength? That's going to be different from person to person, but I want to remind you when you're accessing your strength, you have to remember that we win. Like, like I always say, we win, we win, you win, I win. So remind yourself that I win and that will help help really put the fire 
under you and into accessing that strength that you have. Access your, access, accessing your strength could mean, again, different things to different people. For instance, I recently talked um, about how I had to go into a place of worship. I recently talked about this on one of the, the winning um, Wednesday posts. I have to go into worship at times to help restore my peace. And I worship all the time. But sometimes worship is very purposeful and intentional with regard to, Lord, I need your peace. <laughs> so the worship is a place of uh, peace restoration for me. And I believe it that restoration of peace is a way to access my strength so that I can create the momentum and take the steps to move forward. So that's an example. Um, reading the word of God for me gives me assurance, gives me the, the confidence, gives me that strength that I need because the joy of the Lord is my strength. So that is a way that I access strength. So I'm going to ask you, what do you do? What would you do to access strength in your life? Access the strength to be able to get unstuck and take a step and move forward and start. That's what the accessing the strength does. Accessing the strength helps you to start and it also helps you to continue. So that's what we want to do. That's one of the ways, another one of the ways um, that we can create momentum in our life. Number seven, we're going to 12, y'all. We got some good stuff here. Number seven, create momentum by being brave. Being brave. We don't hear brave enough. We don't hear that word enough. I think I've heard that word a lot more often in my youth, but we don't use that word as much anymore. Someone told me that I was one of the most courageous people that they knew. Uh, another person told me I was extremely resilient. Well, courageous and resilience all have to do with being brave, being brave to go for something, being brave to bounce back after you've gone through trauma or tragedy. So be brave, take chances, take, yes, it's scary, but take the chance, do it anyways, do it scared. You've heard that before, do it scared. When we act, even though we're feeling scared, it helps to overcome the fear. But if you're staying stuck in the fear, you'll always be stuck in the fear. You have to take action. We have to take action. So, you know, the only thing that's holding many of us back is us. That's many of us, for many of us, that is the only thing that is holding us back. So when we start, you'll be amazed. You'll be amazed at the opportunities that will open up to you. I, I, I've said this already. The world will open up to you when you make the decision to start. I'm adjusting my camera, guys, sorry. When you make the, uh, the decision and the commitment to start, the world just opens up to you when you take action. Um, but you have to start. You have to start in order to see them. I believe God rewards those who are faithful. And when I say faithful, faith in action. So I believe there are rewards that come with our action, that God rewards our action and that that's faith in action. I believe that he rewards our faith. And so our faith is showing action. So when we act, that's when we see these rewards. That's when we th see these things open up to us. Oh my gosh, that's so good. So being active, being brave, being brave enough to take action creates momentum. Good stuff. Good stuff. Number eight, number eight, start over if you need to. That's yes. That is a way to create momentum. Start over if you need to. There is nothing wrong with starting over. I had to do it several times. Um, and there's nothing wrong with starting over. Try and try again. Don't give up. Don't stop just because something doesn't work out the way that you planned or the way that you thought it was supposed to go. Don't give up. Lean 
lean into the momentum. The momentum, like I told you before, it's going to help you keep going. Once it gets started, like the, the law of inertia talked about, Newton's law of inertia. Once it started, once it's moving, it's going to take an outside force to stop it. So once momentum starts, it's going to keep going. So you, you got to lean into the momentum, lean into it to help you to continue and ma maintain that momentum that you've already created. Keep taking those leaps of faith. Don't give up. Keep taking those leaps of faith and then take the lessons that you've learned with you as you jump again. All right. Number nine, number nine, how we can create momentum in our life. I hope this is good. Is this helping somebody? Is this helping anybody? Number nine, stay focused. Stay focused, stay positive, stay consistent. Stay focused, stay positive, stay consistent. You've got to have faith. And I'm talking about this faith thing because if you don't believe, you're not going to want to step. You're not going to start. You have to believe. Maybe I should have made that number one how. Number one, besides committing, you have to first believe. But we want to stay focused. <laughs> stay focused, Lisa. Stay focused, positive, and consistent. You've got to have faith and believe that everything will work out. Got to believe that it's just going to work out. And that's that helps us to stay focused, helps us to stay positive, helps us to stay, to stay consistent. Keep your eye on your goals on the prize, on your goals, on your prize, on the vision that you have created and that you envision for your life, for your future. And that, that will help you stay motivated. And, and you're gonna need that. <laughs> you're gonna need that. It's impossible to gain momentum if you're not staying focused, positive, and consistent, guys. So don't stop, don't quit. Don't stop. Don't quit. But if you do have to stop, if there comes a time where you have to stop, get started again. And don't let too much time go by. We all know the examples of people who have dropped out of college or dropped out of high school. Said, oh, you know, I'll get my GED or oh, I'll go back later when life, you know, gets a little bit better and his life is not so crazy and it, and it takes them 10, 15 years or however long. You know, if you have to stop, try to get started back again quickly um, to, to continue and maintain that momentum. In other words, don't give up, guys. Number 10. Oh, I'm loving this, loving this. Number 10, ways how we can create momentum in our life. Write the vision. Write the vision. This is my planner. Write the vision. My planner for 2022. Write the vision. That's a way to create momentum. Why? Because you're putting it in front of you. You're putting it in front of you so you can see it every day. You're, you're reaching toward that goal. You're writing it down and then it helps you to reach toward it. It helps you to take steps toward it when you write the vision. A motivating, a motivating vision for your future can be the motivation that you need to start and it will help you to continue to success. So what do you want to become? What do you want to become? What do you want to accomplish in this life? Hmm? What type of life do you want to live? This is all about vision. The Bible tells us that the people perish due to a lack of vision. Without a vision, the people perish. And then it also tells us to write the vision and make it plain so that those who see it, those who read it, can run with it. That's a paraphrase version. <laughs> but that's exactly what it means to write it down so that when it's seen, Someone can run with the vision, right? They can, they can ingest, I was going to say digest, but no, they can ingest the vision. It becomes a part of you and then you can run with it. Oh, that's good. 
That's so good. So write down the vision and make it sure that it's one that's attractive to you. One that excites you for your future. We can't live nobody else's life. Oh my gosh. You know, and I think that's why we see uh, so many vision boards here recently. Over the last, gosh, what, four or five years or so, we've seen these vision boards just go crazy. Vision board parties. And why is that? It's because writing the vision, creating that vision gives us momentum toward that vision. You know, we, we, when we're seeing the vision, when we're seeing it before us, it gets us excited. It gets us excited and it helps us to create that momentum towards it in our life. So that's number 10. Number 11, eliminate the enemies of momentum. I don't know why I made that into a song. Eliminate the enemies of momentum. <laughs> Cause this is real. This is, this is, this is the hard part. This is the part where you will remain stuck if you don't eliminate these enemies, eliminate the enemies of momentum. So what are these enemies? I'm going to read them out. The enemies are fear. That ring a bell. <laughs> Self-doubt, self-sabotage, laziness, procrastination. I'm stepping on my own toes now. Indecision. Oh, and that, that fear and the indecision, that's my stuff right there. <laughs> those were heavy, heavy for me at one point. And both of those, fear and indecision, but all of these, all of these keep us stuck. Fear, self-doubt, self-sabotage, indecision, laziness, procrastination will keep us stuck and keep us from actually achieving goals, achieving our dreams, and creating that momentum. So they are weapons. They are resistance in effect. And they stop us from being able to access the momentum we need in our life and stop us from becoming our best selves. So other enemies of momentum include, let me see, mm -hmm, mm. drugs, mm -hmm. high calorie food diet. Oh my gosh, how many times have I gone to a restaurant in the past couple of years and because I'm, I'm more in tune, I'm more aware of my need to eat healthier, as I get older and treat my body like it's the only one I got. So I'm looking at these calories on these menus. So many of the menus in the restaurants nowadays actually have the, the calorie count beside whatever that entree is, right? And if y'all have not ever seen some of these calorie counts, pay attention. Because, I mean, I've seen some things 1,600 to over 2,000 calories just for one meal. So high-calorie food diet is an enemy to momentum. Social media and Internet overuse is an enemy, enemy, it's an enemy to momentum. Useless spending is an enemy to momentum. And these are lower value things that are feel good substitutes, but they don't serve our purpose and they're detrimental to us and will stop us <laughs> from creating the life that we desire and building and sustaining that momentum that we need in our life. So that is so important. Um, we're not going to be able to take steps to take action if we are not eliminating those enemies of momentum in our life. Number 12, 12 reasons why I told you I'm giving you 12 reasons, not why, how, 12 reasons how to create momentum in our life. So we talked about the whys, why, the, why it's so good, why momentum is, is beneficial. And now we're talking about the 12 reasons or 12 uh, how, how ways, 12 ways 
to create momentum in our life. And so the 12th, 12th way is take control of your finances. Mm -mm -mm. So Lisa, how does that affect momentum? Why, why do I have to have good money management skills and take control of my finances in order to create momentum in, in my life? Yes. Having having a good many money management skills and taking control of the finances and of your finances will help um, create momentum. It's a part of creating momentum in your life and in your business as well. So when you're working to pay bills, right? You're working to pay bills, and it's like you're on this never-ending treadmill that's just constantly going, or or that that hamster that's running <laughs> running up on the wheel. You're just a hamster running on a wheel. And that's the, the, the focus, just I got to keep going and just working to pay these bills. But we got to make sure that the money that we have and the way that we spend it is in line with our goals, our dreams, our desires for our life. And so it has to be in line with our budget or what I call a strategic money plan. It's harder to create momentum when you are struggling financially. I'm going to say that again. It's so much harder to create momentum in your life when you're struggling financially or when you're stuck in your finances or spending money, spending your money lavishly on things that don't contribute, again, to your goals, to your dreams, and ultimately to your happiness and to your success and security. So we want to use money to fuel our dreams instead of feeding that hamster, that, that wheel or feeding that tread, that unending treadmill. So those are 12 ways guys. Those are 12 ways, um, that we can create momentum in our life. 12 hows of creating momentum. So now I want to give you some examples. For those of you who have hung in with me, this is probably, again, one of the longest, I think I did the, the longest teaching last week was 45 minutes. And it looks like this one is going to be closer to an hour. So I hope that you're hanging in here with me. If not, I hope you'll come back and, and listen to the replay when you can to get these examples, just some, you know, simple examples of how it looks when we're creating momentum, what, what creative, creating momentum in our life might look like. So one example is if we want to eat healthier, and we were just talking about this high calorie food diet and how that's an enemy to momentum, right? If we want to eat healthier, do that first. And so the next few things I'm going to talk about, the next few examples I'm going to give you include doing first in your day, the thing that contributes to your goal, your dream, the life that you desire. So if one of the things that you want to do is create a healthier lifestyle, then do that first. Make your priorities the first thing that you do each day. So if that's an example, start the day by eating something healthy. Eat a, a, a healthy piece of fruit or vegetable as the first thing you eat before anything else. Create that momentum for that goal. If you want to learn Spanish, another example, if you want to learn Spanish, first thing you do, contribute to that goal as the first thing you do in the morning. Learn two or three vocabulary words before you have morning coffee, before you have your tea in the mornings. Do what you love first. Contribute toward what you love first. If you want to be a better mother, a better dad, you know, pray over your children first. Do that first. You know, plan for their future first. This is just how you create momentum for the goals that you want to achieve in your life. Another example, if you want to write a book, you want to write a book. So a book is a, a huge goal, right? We said we got to create that, that bag, that big, hairy, audacious goal, dream big. So writing a book is a, is a huge goal and that finished product can, can seem daunting and overwhelming, but we got to start with the small steps. So write one page, you get up in the morning, write one page, 
before you even if before you get out of bed pull your journal over pull pull that journal over and just begin writing contribute to yourself first give you and your dreams first priority another example make your bed every day now we've heard this we've heard this how many of you make your bed every morning <laughs> make your bed every day sounds trivial right but it's not making our bed every day puts us in an action to contribute toward creating the life we desire it make it really makes a big difference I, I, I encourage you to try it try it out it will make you feel more productive in your day and help you to create that momentum Number five, if you want to make six figures, so if you're already making five figures and you want to make six, or you're making six figures and you want to make seven, find a mentor that's a step above. So if you're making six already, find that mentor that's making seven figures. If you're making seven figures already, if you're a millionaire already, yeah, seven million. Yeah, if you're a millionaire already, if you're making seven figures, find that mentor that's making eight. A good mentor will push you to be more and to do more than you are now. So that's another example of creating momentum in your life. Do a 30 day challenge. How many of y'all have seen all these challenges we have out here? We got three day challenges, five day, seven day. Um, do a 30 day challenge. Create a habit. These, that's what the challenge does. It helps you to create a habit in your life. So pick a habit that you like to create for your life that is, is helping you to design and create the life that you desire. Ch choose that habit, pick whatever that habit is, and then find a challenge that helps you to do that, helps you to build that into your life every day or create your own challenge. If you don't find it out there, create your challenge yourself, create, create your own challenge. All right, so another example, last example of creating momentum in life is putting money into a savings account. And so, you know, I had to bring in some finance talk into this. You know, I'm a financial educator, so I got to gotta educate us on the finance side. Putting money into a savings account is actually um, a, a type of momentum, if you will. Because when we put money into that savings account or we're, you know, putting money into an investment vehicle, basically... The, the, the money that we put in there is earning interest, it's earning dividends, and then that interest and dividends are compounding on themselves. So remember I said the momentum builds momentum. It's almost like you don't even have to do as much work because you've already got the ball rolling and because of Newton's law of inertia, you know, that he said, which we know that is just the principle of life is something is already moving. It just keeps moving. Well, that's what's happening with when you put something in your savings account, when you put money into your investment vehicle, it's actually um, creating that momentum. So that's another real life example of creating momentum in your life. So I want to give us a, a few, just a few examples of how we can do it in business. You know, I speak to entrepreneurs, I cater to entrepreneurs, small businesses, nonprofits. And so I always want to make sure I include information to help us with um, on the business side. Even though I know this is Life Topic Wednesday, um, I would be uh, remiss if I did not include some information and, and just give us some examples of how this creating momentum looks in business. So. A number one example is know where you are. We've got to know where we are in business. And now this applies to life too. But before you can start anything, you have to know where you are before you can get started to go to where you're trying to go. Um, an example of this is say we're looking at uh, gross income and you want your gross income to be at a certain place in the future. Well, a way that you can know where you are and help create momentum is to look back at what your gross income was, you know, six months ago. What were the number of leads that um, you attracted each month? What was your average sale each month? This will help you because you can look at, okay, where was I? And then where has it grown to now? And then begin to track, track those statistics, track those numbers to see um, how you're progressing. And then that 
actually helps you get information as well so that you can then tweak and, and, and shift and make changes as needed to increase those numbers. So that's a, a way to create momentum in your business. Number two, a number two way of creating momentum in our business is find your message and share your message. The right words will produce momentum for your business. So as a business owner, we should be able to really to be able to state our message in five words or less. So for instance, for my business, Golden Path Services, LLC, that's my accounting um, nonprofit business consulting business. And so in that business, my slogan, my message is that I educate, equip, and empower people with the tools and information that they need, actually entrepreneurs, small businesses, and nonprofits with the information that they need. So educate, equip, and empower. In Lisa L. McLean Enterprises, I, I teach um, and, and coach and um, produce the books. And so one of the things that I, I, I preach and teach with that business is that you can live golden now. So those three words, live golden now, or you can go to my YouTube channel, winning and living golden. So winning and living golden, four words. We should be able to get our message across in just a few words. And so that's really important. And so once we have the right message, once we know what that message is for our business, then we have to share that message. And this will create the momentum because in our business, our followers, people will become followers, they will become loyal followers. And those loyal followers will help to share the message. You see what I'm talking about? That's momentum. Momentum just building on itself. And so that's another example of how we can create uh, momentum in our business. Number three, create the plan and commit to it. Now, most of us will call this a business plan or business proposal, but whatever you call your plan, create the plan. And we talked about it earlier. We talked about writing the vision, that writing the vision is one of the ways to create momentum. So create the plan, write down the steps. What steps do I need to take to get from A to B or from A to B to C? Wherever you're trying to go, write down those steps, the steps that you need to grow your business, to increase your bottom line, to make you know, the, the achievements that you want to make in your business. So write the plan, create the plan, and then stay committed to the plan. That's another example, really good example of creating momentum in your business. You can't start if you don't know where you're going. So create the plan. Another example, follow one success with another. I can't say that enough. Follow one success with an immediately and immediately with another success. The best time to do a sales presentation is immediately after making a sale. You have that momentum going. You're already in the, in the groove. You're already in the flow. Follow one success with another. If you've just rewarded yourself for meeting a deadline, Make the next step now. Make that next goal now. Use those, those uh, amounts of confidence that you gain with momentum. Use those amounts of confidence and assurance and energy from those successes and build on them to create that momentum that you, that you need. Creating one successful event after another creates momentum. And so a fifth example, fifth and final example of creating momentum in our business is reward yourself. Reward yourself. You deserve it. Start celebrating even those small successes. This is so important. We are so moved by incentives in life. And so this will help us. It will help you to create momentum. And this goes for business. This goes for life. Set a reward for completing a task. And as you go along, this will help you build momentum and it will help you produce um, quick growth. And then it will help you meet your goals quicker. So those are five examples of how you can create momentum in your business. So guys, we've talked about a lot today. Momentum is huge. 
It's huge for our life. It's huge for our business. We talked about what, what momentum is. We went into several whys, what the benefits are. Why do we need? Why do we want to have this momentum? We went into what, 12 of the, the hows. How do we get it? How do we create it? How do we create this momentum? And then we went through several examples of how this might look in our life and in our business examples of creating momentum so there's so many reasons why we should create momentum when we went we went over those right in our life and our business and and there's so many ways that we can do it there's so many ways that you can actually create momentum in your life but there are also those enemies so don't forget those enemies are out there those enemies of momentum are out there they're lurking right in your face or they're lurking right underneath the surface and so those will prevent us from getting started and staying on the golden path. See how I just did that? <laughs> and staying on the golden path. So, you know, we've got to have that momentum in order to have success. Momentum is the only way we're going to reach those success because momentum helps us to act, helps us to move. And when we move, it creates that momentum, which creates momentum, which creates momentum. It's kind of reminding me of, you know, the, the begats in the Bible, <laughs> momentum, begat, momentum, begat, <laughs> momentum. And one, one last why, one last benefit to creating momentum that I want to share with you is, is that when you do, when you do create that momentum, you develop a, an internal locus of control, an internal locus of control and it's unaffected by external things. And so you get to write your own ticket for life. When you create this momentum, you create this internal, you develop this internal locus of control. So what is, what is an internal locus of control? Internal locus of control is it's the degree to which people believe that they, that we, as opposed to some external force beyond our control and outside of us and beyond our, our influence. It's the, the degree to which we believe that we have control over the outcomes and events in our lives as, um, as a result of our actions. So that's what internal locus of control is, as opposed to <laughs> the external locus of control um, which basically means that external locus of control means that you believe that life is just going to happen to you, that you have no control over it, that your actions have no results as to how your life is going to turn out. And, you know, locus of the external locus of control means that your life is basically, um, controlled by, by fate or chance. And so when we create this momentum in our life, I believe that it does create an internal locus of control where we believe that when we act, when we take action, that those actions can help us to achieve, you know, the goals that we have for our life and the, and the life that we desire for ourselves. Creating momentum is not easy. It's not easy. It takes work. It takes effort. I know, trust me, but when I tell you it's worth it, whew. I'm gonna have to do do another do another teaching on the how it's worth it. Um, but once it's created, it because it, it can change your life. It can change your life. It can change your business. It can change everything. So get started, get started. And when you get started, keep moving, keep moving. You have to know that there are possibilities awaiting you. You have to believe that. You have to believe that there are greater things in store for you and in store for your life. So don't settle. Don't settle for the lie that this is how it's always been. So this is how it's always going to be. Don't settle for that lie. Don't believe that lie. The best is yet to come for you. Create momentum in your life and make your dreams a reality. I'm so excited that you you stopped through and stopped by and, and scroll through to, to join me today on my Winning and Living Golden channel. Thank you for, for tuning in to this episode of Winning with Lisa, where we win, we win, we win. 
And I'm so excited that you are on this golden path, that you're on this path to winning and living golden in your life. Um, join me back here. Join me back here on every Winning Wednesday. We are winning on Wednesdays. We're talking life topics on the first Wednesday which is today we're talking finance topics on the second Wednesday. We come back in on the third Wednesday and we are talking word and worship. We are going into the word of God and worship and just really doing things to enhance our spirit and win in our spirit. And then on the fourth Wednesday, we are back with business topic Wednesday. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll come back and see us again on winning and living golden. Take care, guys.